Hi everyone, welcome to my soil art studio. I'm here at home and I'm so excited to show you some of these soil based art supplies that you're going to be able to create with and learn from today. I'm Yumina Pressler, a soil scientist and educator at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and I'm here to introduce you to these wonderful palettes that have been created from soil. So these are paints that were made just for you. They are derived from soil. And today, here in the studio, we are going to use them to paint soil with soil. So I'm gonna start by introducing you to the supplies that I have here in my studio. And then I'm gonna go through the project that we're gonna to do today. After that, I'll walk you through step by step all of the different pieces of that project. We'll see what we come up with, and then we'll take it from there. All right, are you ready to get started? Me too, let's go. I wanna take a little bit of time walking you through the supplies that we have for you today. So you should have in front of you a card and a little watercolor palette that comes along with it. If you're at home, your card may look something like this. A card that has a little drop of paint on each of these six different colors. So either one is awesome. Both, all of the paints are the same. They just look a little bit different. And so what these are is this is a card that tells you all about this material here. These are watercolors that have been created with soil and a couple other simple ingredients, including water, acacia gum, honey, vegetable glycerin, and a little bit of clove oil. So they're all natural, ecologically friendly, and based primarily in soil. The way that we make these art supplies is by gathering some soil from out in the field where we have permission to collect it, separating out the gritty sand particles and leaving just the smooth silt and clay, mixing that together with these other ingredients that are listed down on the page here, and then milling them together into these beautiful, soft, silky watercolor paints that you are gonna get to enjoy today. The question is, why does soil make a good watercolor paint? Well, in part because soils have so many different colors within them. Soils exhibit colors from all parts of the rainbow. So what we have here are six different watercolor paints, all with natural pigment, so natural colors that come from soils. We've got a dark brown, almost black at the top here, a little bit of a lighter brown, an orange, a yellow, a gray, and of course, a green. And so we're gonna use all of these beautiful natural colors to paint a soil and plant scene. Where do the colors come from? Well, the colors come from all kinds of different pigmenting agents or things that create color within the soil. One important one is organic matter and any kind of organic material. So pieces of decaying plant material that creates these darker brown colors that you see at the top here. Iron oxides are another component that create color within soils, and that iron will create a reddish, orangey, yellow color. So these are derived from iron oxides. Then there's different kinds of minerals that are derived from rocks that also serve as pigmenting agents in soil. For example, chloride or glauconite, olivine or serpentine can create this green color. And then you've got other things like salts that can serve as a pigmenting agent like we see in this lighter color here. So there's lots of different reasons why soils have so many different colors. And that's where the colors in this palette come from. Okay, so let's talk a little more about supplies. Here's the wooden palette we're gonna use today. In addition to this, you'll also need some kind of piece of paper to work on. This is watercolor paper. I've cut it into a couple of different sizes. You'll also need a paintbrush. This is a paintbrush that I'm gonna use here. You can use any paintbrush that you have available. You'll also need some water to be able to pick up and move the paint around on your page. And then I strongly recommend you have some kind of paper towel that you can also use to dry off your brush a little bit when you change colors in between. So I've got all of my supplies here ready to go. 
For today's project, we are going to paint two soil profiles. What is a soil profile? A soil profile is the straight on view of a soil. So if you dig a hole in the ground, you'll find that there's often layers of different colors and shapes and textures of soil coming down from the surface. Soils are so much more than just a pile of brown stuff. There are lots of different layers and that's where many of the different colors reveal themselves. And so soil scientists will walk up to a new soil, dig a hole, and look at those different layers. We call those layers horizons. And all soil horizons have different properties, one of them being differences in color. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to paint two soil profiles, including all of the layers or horizons within them, adorn them with a couple of plants on top, and I'm gonna show you how you can paint a really simple soil and then one that's a little bit more complex. Let me show you a couple of examples before we begin. Here are three soil profile paintings that I've made in my studio over the last couple of months. You'll notice that each of them has a few things in common. They all have a dark brown surface horizon. They all have some kind of color or maybe a couple of colors underneath. And then they've got plants on top. These are the three elements that you need to be able to create something that is reminiscent of a soil out in the world. And the next time you're outside looking for soils in places that you've been a lot before, I want you to notice these different horizons. Notice the layers and colors and textures and shapes that you might find out in nature. I usually create these paintings by starting with the surface of the soil, where I'll add this darker brown color. Then I'll go down in depth, and as I get deeper and deeper into the soil, I'll change the color to represent a different horizon. We're gonna start first with two horizons in the soil, and then we'll build up from there. After I've created multiple horizons, then I will add some plants up to the top. Should we give it a try? Okay, so before we start painting our soil profiles, let's start just by swatching the colors. So because these paints are created with soil, sometimes they take a little bit of time to wet up, to wake up, to be ready to be painted with. So what you wanna do is take your paintbrush and dab a whole bunch of water on the surface of this soil paint. You wanna do that on all of them and give the water a little bit of time to get into that paint. Sometimes the paint won't lift up immediately, so it's good to get it all wet, nice and wet, before we wanna begin. After that, what we're gonna do is test out all of the colors. I want you to test out the colors first on a piece of paper so that you can get used to using them, but also so that you can see what the colors look like. Now that all of our paints are nice and wet here, I'm gonna go back to the first one, take a little bit of water from my um, dish here, pick up some of this chocolatey brown color, and I'm just gonna make a little blob on my piece of paper. Ooh, doesn't that look like melted chocolate? I love it. Let's go through and do that for all six of them, just so we can see what the colors look like. Here's the darker, almost black. Love that. Okay, let's give this yellow a try. So give it a try. Go through and make a little square for all of your colors that you have today. If you're working with the dots, you'll want to do the exact same thing. Just use a little bit less water because they're smaller pieces of paint and so you don't need as much water. Look at that orange. <laughs> I love these colors. Look how bright they are. Can you believe that came from soil? It's amazing. All right, two more. Now we can use green up at the surface here. All right, and the gray. What an awesome color combination. We can use this color combination to make so many different paintings of soil. 
And so today we're gonna do one together and then I'll set you loose and you can pick whatever color combination you would like. Let's get a close up. How do they look? Pretty great. Which one's your favorite? Ooh, it's so hard for me to choose a favorite. If I had to pick, probably the yellow. It's so bright and so beautiful. I just absolutely love it. But they all look awesome. Let's work with a piece of paper that's shaped something like this. I've cut it out into a rectangle so we have plenty of space to paint our soil profile and include lots of different horizons. And we also have space to include some plants and maybe even some animals up at the surface. Because remember, soils are the foundation of every single ecosystem. They're everywhere and we wanna give ourselves room to explore that in the art form. Step number one is to decide which color of brown you wanna use for the surface. Do you want to use the chocolatey brown or do you want to use the darker brown? I think today I am going to go with the chocolatey brown. So I want you to take a little bit of paint, or a lot if you feel like it, and just make a line across the surface. You're just going to paint this topsoil or the surface horizon. The top of the soil is this dark brown color in many cases because it's got an accumulation of organic matter. That doesn't mean that every soil has brown surface horizon, but many of them do. So we're going to go with that. Once I've gone it to a place about, you know, halfway down or so, I am going to pick the next color. Now the horizon that's going to go down here will represent the parent material. So the original material from which that soil formed. Because it's probably derived more from rocks than from organic matter, it tends to have a different color. It isn't as brown. So I think today, hmm, I think I'm gonna go with orange. So pick up the orange and you just want to add another horizon underneath. You can start to mix them together a little bit. You can leave some white gaps if you want to. It's really up to you. Your goal is to create two blocks of color. One that represents the topsoil and the surface horizon, and another that represents the parent material from which that soil formed. Look at that. It already is starting to look like a soil profile. Remember the third element is to add some plants. Soils are such an important medium for plant growth. Plants need soils in order to take up water and nutrients, and there's all kinds of different organisms that live in the soil that help plants as well. So we wanna make sure plants are part of our picture here. So of course I'm gonna go with the green to represent plants. And the simplest way that you can make a plant is just by making a straight line so we'll make some grass blades going straight up like this. You can also play around with making some bigger leaf shapes like that. Or if you just want to stick to grass blades, go for it. You can make whatever kind of plant you would like. Take a look here. We've got plants at the surface that are interacting directly with the surface horizon, the top soil, that's continuously connected down to the subsoil, which represents the parent material. This is a very simple representation of a soil. Are you ready to make a more complex one? I've got another sheet of paper here ready for our second soil profile. We're gonna use the same approach. We're gonna start with a darker surface horizon, but now instead of one horizon below that, we're gonna include several. As soils get older, they tend to develop more horizons, and soil scientists use the properties of those horizons to figure out how that soil got there in the first place. Okay. Now it's your turn to make a more complex soil profile. 
You can choose to make either three horizons or four horizons for this next one. So the first thing you want to do is pick the color that you want to put at the surface. Do you want it to be dark brown or a lighter brown? And then decide the two or three colors that you want to be in the subsoil below. Then, just like we did in the last piece, you want to start with the surface horizon. You could even mix colors together. So I could add some of this lighter brown and then come in and add some of the darker brown on top. It's totally up to you. Then I'm going to add the next color that represents the horizon underneath it. So here I'm going to use the yellow and you see how they're starting to bleed together a bit? That's what I want to happen because this is exactly the kind of thing that happens in real world soils. Water will move down through the soil profile, picking up things along the way and depositing it lower down in the horizon below. So you can see how some of this material from the surface horizon is already getting into the next horizon. So that's very reminiscent of soil. Okay, I'm gonna go with orange and then I'm gonna put gray on the bottom. So I'm gonna put a smaller horizon. What I'm trying to show you here is that horizons can have different thicknesses. Some horizons are really deep and other ones are much thinner. So in this case, I'm making the orange horizon a little bit thinner. And then my last one is going to be this gray horizon here. I'm gonna put it at the bottom. And right now I'm not touching the two together because the paint is still a little bit wet. So I'm gonna paint it and then I'll gently connect the horizons together and they'll slowly start to bleed into one another. Look at that. If that's not a beautiful soil, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, it's time to add some plants. So I want you to pick up your green color and go for it. You can make plants of any shape and size. You can have them be skinny lines like this, you can press the paintbrush down onto the page and see what kind of shape it creates. You can make a little bush by adding little dots. Anything you want, just get some green on there. And there you have it. You've got a soil profile of your own design. Let's compare the two soils that we just created together. The first one is a little bit simpler because it doesn't have as many different horizons or layers within the soil. This second one is a little bit more complex. It's had a longer period of time to develop these distinct different horizons. But what you can see here is that many of the horizons bleed into one another. They are connected. The horizon below influences the horizon above and vice versa. We also learned that water tends to move down through the soil profile from the surface, moving things with it along the way. And because of that, we get all kinds of variation of different soil colors and properties, shapes and textures out in the world. So the next time you're outside, I encourage you to take a look at the soils around you. Do you see different horizons or layers out there in the world? Have you noticed this before in places you've been? Can you recognize different colors of soil out there in the world? So I hope by spending a little bit of time painting soils, you are able to see soils from a different perspective. Soils are so beautiful when we stop and take a look. And our hope is that these watercolor paints, coupled with a fun activity of making some soil profiles, has helped you see soils in a new light. Now get out there and find some soil profiles wherever you might be, and let me know what you find. I'd love to hear from you. That's all for me. Bye.